Okay, we'll go ahead and call this meeting to order. I'd like to welcome you all this evening. Uh, Mr. Sugars, can we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Fellers. Present. Commissioner Hackler. Present. Commissioner Leeson. Present. Commissioner Lewis. Commissioner Long. Present. Commissioner McLaren. Here. Commissioner Stewart. Here. Chairman Tetrick. Here. Commissioner Watson. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to welcome Steve Fellers to the commission. We appreciate you stepping up. Okay, we will move on to uh, item number two. Have we all had a chance to review the minutes from our last meeting? Any questions, comments, clarifications? <coughs> Do we have a motion for approval? I'm going to approve the minutes as they stated. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Item number three, new business. Mr. Shippers. Good evening, commissioners. Tonight we're here to review a special use permit at 2953 Southeast Highway 54. I've got it on the map there. It is next to the existing Deer Grove RV Park, which is in the dotted lines. And then the proposed expansion is 2.3 acres in the yellow solid box. With a special use permit, it is different from our rezoning cases that we typically see, as we are reviewing a single use and not a broad range of uses as in a rezoning case. Uh, their plans, the applicant's plans, are to expand the RV park eastward. Our zoning ordinance considers this a campground. The ordinance defines that as establishments primarily engaged in providing overnights or short-term camping sites for recreational vehicles, travel trailers, campers, or tents. And is a perfect description of what they're looking to do out there. They're looking to add 35 more spots to their existing camp. And as far as further details on that, the applicants will follow this and give you a few, bit, few more details on that. As you know, this area is located in our extraterritorial jurisdiction, or ETJ. Starting in 2009, we signed an interlocal agreement with Butler County. They gave the city of El Dorado zoning jurisdiction about three miles outside of city limits. Everything else continues to go through Butler County, including development, site plan reviews, and building permit applications. On May 21st, this case went before the Butler County Commission. Uh, by interlocal agreement, their job is to review the case and determine if it's in the scope and best interest of the Butler County Comprehensive Plan. At that meeting, they voted five to zero to determine that it is within the scope and best interest of the Butler County Community excuse me, Comprehensive Plan. The character and existing uses out here, um, we have a real range and mix of uses. Uh, my first slide here shows a few of those. Um, in total, we have a mix of residential, commercial, institutional, and agricultural. So we have a real mixing pot. This first slide here shows in relation to the existing Deer Grove RV Park, as well as the proposed expansion. Single family residential, which is highlighted in the green areas. There's some to the west, some to the north, and some to the east there. To the south of the existing and proposed park is a mobile home park, a higher density residential area there in blue. As for the other uses I mentioned, these red areas are commercial properties or institutional properties. Um, to the north, we have more agricultural and commercial. Right there to the upper right is a, actually a church to, to fill in our institutional requirements there. And it's also important to note while we talk about these commercial uses in the area, that Highway 54 is a major thoroughfare in this area. Uh, a little research with KDOT shows that they have over 5,000 vehicles per day, including nearly 600 heavy commercial vehicles that traffic that, that stretch of 54. This is an up-to-date zoning map of this area around the subject properties yellow there to the left and right, the east and west, that is single family residential. Most of the block that we're talking about here is that blue, which is manufactured home park zoning. The existing Deer Grove RV Park is zoned C1 general business. Um, just like in mobile home park zoning, to do a campground requires a special use permit. And then of course the subject property, the 2.3 acres, um, is part of the blue area, which is zoned mobile, excuse me, manufactured home park residential district. That's a long one. So the current zoning is the MP. By right, landowners out there may build single family residences on it. They may also build a manufactured home park. Now by right, that means if they can meet what is in our code, then they may build it by administrative approval. Um, that does not mean it requires a special use permit or rezoning. That's what can be built today. 
There's a few other uses that can be built out there with a special use permit. That includes campground, which is what we're here for tonight. Agricultural uses, daycares, and educational institutions. All right, let's take a closer look at what's going on in the property today. Um, the whole property is 2.9 acres with a single family residence in the front, a detached garage, and a small storage shed. According to Butler County records, all of these structures were built around 1953. Now, when I refer to the subject parcel, I'm really talking about the rear 2.3 acres, um, but this is what's there today on the whole lot. As you know, the applicant is looking to split the parcel and so that the residence would remain in the front and the back 2.3 acres would be the RV park expansion. Allowed today, as I mentioned, you can do one or with a flat subdivision, multiple single family homes on the lot at 2.9 acres. You could build a few homes. Um, without a flat, you could do the manufactured home park. Our maximum density by ordinance allows up to eight units per acre, which would be 23 total on this property. Um, something that's interesting is we talk a lot with our rezoning applications that there's always buffering and screening required under different zoning with different intensities. Since this is all mobile home park zoning, there would be no screening, no buffering required. Um, and an interesting fact is that the minimum setback for a mobile home park would be 15 feet. So a developer today could hypothetically remove the home there and put up to 23 uh, mobile homes on there to 15, as close as 15 feet to the property lines. <clears throat> So this is a bit of a comparison between what's allowed, what I just mentioned, versus proposed. So the max density for RV and travel trailer units is 20 units per acre, up to 46 allowed. Now this is on the 2.3 acres, this is the proposed side. Um, what they're actually proposing with their submitted plans is 35 units. Now a big difference between what's allowed today and the proposed special use permit is the actual buffering. The ordinance does not call it a buffer, but what it does say is that they are required to have 30 feet between the property line and the nearest RV or travel trailer. I refer to that as a buffer. So you're required to have the 30 feet. 10 feet of that closest to the property line has to be landscaped. In conversations with the applicants, there's a number of trees and cedar trees out there that they were planning to keep in that area and plant some more in the future to have a good screen. A privacy fence is not required Though conversations with the applicant, uh, they've been planning all along to add one, and the applicant has also offered to make that a condition of the special use permit if you choose to add that to it. Now, when we talk about the screening and buffering, it's a good time to mention that in our reviews, when we change the intensities of land uses, especially going from vacant property, which is primarily what the 2.3 acres is, to something like an RV park that's gonna have a lot of people coming and going and residing there in the short term, it's going to create impacts on the neighbors, usually negative impacts. Two of those most identifiable is gonna be the addition and creation of dust and noise. However, given the unique location that this special use permit um, is in, we anticipate there's a number of factors that would uh, help limit these impacts on the neighboring properties. Uh, one of those is what we just spoke about. You have the 30 foot buffer, the landscaping, the trees in there, and the addition of the privacy fence. That will be helpful with the dust creation and the noise between the properties, which is also similar to what we require in our zoning buffers that we're typically talking about. It's also notable uh, that the presence of Highway 54 and the traffic counts I mentioned is a pretty noisy place, as well as the numerous gravel roads and driveways in the area. Some property specific things, we know that this is the, will be a sizable development. Um, there is ample infrastructure available. There is actually a public water and sewer district in this area. Uh, they do have capacity for this, and so we don't anticipate any problems there. This property will continue to access Highway 54, which is the best case scenario. Similar to our rezoning discussions, the last thing we want is high traffic counts going through single family neighborhoods. Our comprehensive plan covers this area in the future land use map. Uh, it's considered neighborhood mixed use, not just this property, not just this block, but this entire area. Uh, it defines it as a mix of residential types, small-scale commercial and institutional uses that are typically meant to serve the needs of the surrounding neighborhood. This serves as a good transition between residential and more intense land uses. So with that, uh, our staff recommendation is to approve the special use permit. Um, as I mentioned, the applicant has added the option to require a privacy fence as a condition to it if you choose to do so. 
Thank you. Would the applicant like to uh, approach the podium? Please. Can you please state your name for the record? Natalie Donches, um, partner of Donches Properties LLC, but it's also Deer Grove RV Park. And um, so my husband and I are partners with that company. I'll try to leave out what Jay has already went through because I believe there's no need to quote statistics that you already have been told. Um, I, I would like to um, pass out something that was not passed along to Jay. This is, I have several things, but the first one is this letter that is from a neighbor um, that lives on Houston Road. And in her name is Janet Brown. Can I have one of them back, please? <laughs> uh, basically, Janet says that she lives at 1080 Southeast Blue Stem Road, and she has been at the residence for 38 years. She says, I'm writing this letter to let you know I have no problem concerning and regarding the expansion of Deer Grove RV Park along with uh, along the property between Dale and Ginger Hall and the Provost. The, can I get my map so I can show you where everybody lives? Or I guess I can do it on this. Um, oh, you know what? You're welcome to take the mouse if you want to. Does it? There's, there's an arrow you can use to kind of. Okay. So, <laughs> um, so this is obviously our proposed expansion. On that's the church. Oh, you shouldn't <laughs> okay, have told me to do play. that. So that's the church um, area. Uh, this road here is Blue Stem Road. So um, the Holes live at this property, and I'm not sure how long, but they've been there a long time. And um, the next to it, um, these people that have moved in here is um, the Provost, and they have lived there since, I believe, November of last year. So, and after speaking to both of those um, property owners that border directly beside this park, um, they are in full agreement with it. And so, um, back to Janet's letter though, um, um, basically condensing her letter, she helped with a issue that came up just recently with our um, neighborhood watch. And two of our wonderful neighbors in the neighborhood watch turned in some young kids that appeared to be doing the wrong thing and it ended up being a sheriff's chase and they caught them out on Highway 54. And in that time though, they run through that yellow area there of our, our land and supposedly have left something back there that states in this letter. I prefer not to say it out loud in case the public's listening because I don't think they need to know it's there because um, it's still there if it is there. So, and if you read your letter, you'll see it. Um, but um, they all want this place cleaned up. They don't want it left the way it is. They, um, H.J. Provo would love to see um, our expansion. He says, I may border it, but he says the only thing I worry about is me making too much noise for your RV park. Mm -hmm. So um, um, th that's the neighborhood that I have around there that is all happy that it's going to come in. So um, I just thought it was, it was worthy noting that the neighborhood, and, and I guess I do, you know, obviously I own this house and I, and I do own this house. So it's worth noting that there's, uh, you know, there's only one other property that can um, not appreciate that it's going to be there. The church, um, I believe called Jay and they were not against it either. So. Um, but uh, the park is, um, if allowed, the house, like he said, will be split off and as long as it, if we get there, you know, um, it's allowed to do the expansion. Um, Deer Grove was a, we're currently an active business and we have excellent ratings with um, RV organizations. The, the best one in the whole United States and Canada is Good Sam RV Directory. And, and so they do a range from one to 10, 10 being the best. Um, Deer Grove's 2018 ratings were, um, for our facility, we had an eight. Our restroom rating was a nine, and our park appeal was a nine. Also gonna hand those out. I don't need to have one in the back. 
those are the directory, um, the condensed version of the front page, and how you read their um, scale. Um, we also, on Google, have a 4.2 out of 5 rating. So I guess at this point it's obvious that we take care of our property or it would not be getting the ratings that we are getting. Um, we're adding expansion to the, the existing park to the east will not be impacting the rest of the community in any different way than it already does. Um, it will, however, bring in more business, mainly in the summer months. The local area needs more RV parking, and, and, so it's, um, and that's only at certain times. We're busiest in the summer. Right. El Dorado is trying to make its town more of a destination. Um, the city has added a wonderful BIS golf park, and um, they are trying to expand on all sorts of things that they're trying to make this a destination. I would love to have my park follow suit. Um, I do know that just being an RV park owner, I know that Emporia, Kansas has a wonderful RV park. They've added, um, Emporia is where disc golf was originated, if no one knows that. And so they've added, they have huge tournaments in that town. And so if El Dorado can get on board, we have more people coming in, and I um, would love to be part of that. Um, Deer Grove um, would love to make El Dorado a destination town, just like Emporia. And um, the reason I know all this is because I belong to a lot of tourism, or tourism organizations. I belong to every board that I can that might help my business and help Kansas and El Dorado in its, in its tourism. Um, I've attended training at, in Colorado last year at a destination boot camp, and um, that training was there to help me build my destination and help build El Dorado as a destination. And that's the way I see it. I don't see just building my park. I want to build El Dorado. And um, so with that, we have recently purchased another property. Let me show you. It's over. This is Kaffir Road, if you can see that on the map. Right here is what, if any of you knew, was the Ramsey property. Um, the Ramseys still live on part of the property, but they sold me this whole existing area. So most of that property, if anybody drives by recently, you'll see this had some uh, quite a bit of work done. And part of that was a drainage issue that still continues because, well, it started raining <laughs> and we had to stop. So, um, but that draining issue is a problem and it always will be there that almost that whole section of land is a drainage. There's nothing you can develop on it. So what I would like to do as, as a business owner is to expand some of my RV park over into that. That has nothing to do with our expansion, but it has to do with the whole scenario of what I'd love to do. I want to put some disc golf um, little areas there so they can practice before they go to one of our tournaments in El Dorado. I'd like to put in horseshoe pits and bochi, bochi ball and in the croquet area. I want a, a walking path over there. And will they be able to do it all the time? No, because it's a waterway. But they'll be able to do it most of the time. So I think it will ex it expand into our community out there. People in our community can use it more as well. Um, but so ex this expansion, it does help our entire community and not just in Prospect, but El Dorado. Um, our guests that are staying in that current RV park, they spend their time and their money in El Dorado and other parts of Butler County. The refinery and other businesses are always doing maintenance and other construction projects that they need out-of-town workers that need somewhere to stay while they are here. If we don't put them up where we're at, they're going to go to Wichita because they won't have any option. Or they'll go to Tawanda, but they're not going to spend their money in El Dorado. They're going to leave. So I believe that um, we've been there since 2003. We've seen the refinery expand. We've seen some years where they do nothing. If our expansion doesn't go through, we're no different than what we've been for the, since 2003. Of course, we'd love to expand on it. There are several businesses um, in our area, and he, he went through that. I don't have to explain to you all that there's, uh, there's probably close to eight, nine businesses out in our area besides us. So, and... Uh, there's also a school and two churches. So, um, but our RV park, you know, it helps pay um, for El Dorado schools. We love that. We want to uh, expand our school system out here. We want to make it better. And, and paying commercial property taxes is being, you know, we pay a little bit more than just residential. So it, it does help pay for, for all the things that we need here in our community. 
um, our, the current lot, lot, wooded lot that is there for this expansion, the yellow area, um, those same neighbors, the holes ex specifically, have expressed great concern over fire danger and other things that can happen with that wooded lot. There is very much so about two to three vagrant areas that have been back in there. Now they're old, but that just tells you that people have, they've shacked up back there. And we care about it so we don't allow it to happen anymore. But, uh, but it still needs, it needs something done to it. Whether we do an expansion or not, we'd love to see something done and this would be a great deal for our community. Um, um, we provide lighting, which is one of the um, it, um, requirements with the city is that we have to require lighting. Right now we have about 10 light poles in our current park and they all face directly down. And the net, the, we're looking at adding at least four in the uh, new park, the proposed expansion. Um, at this time right now, the nearest house is 165 feet from the nearest pole light. I'm, I'm guessing it's probably not shining into their house and we don't plan on that. We plan on it just being on our property. And with the wooden fence being up, car lights will not be shining on the uh, existing properties around it. It should stop all any lights that are shining. So if they're in there at night driving around, um, it will be a six foot um, cedar fence. So I believe that's probably adequate to stop most headlights to shine through on people's yard and yards. Um, and you know, the fence is necessary for more than just for us and my people. Um, it's, it's necessary for the neighbors not to have to, you know, view RVs or, you know, not that there's some that are worthy of viewing, by the way. Um, I have many 500, thousand to a million dollar motorhomes come through my property and um, I'll be honest they don't want to see anything in the neighbor's backyard either they don't want to see their dirt piled up their tree limbs piled up they don't want to see the gl broken glass windows in the corner of their property that's been piled up by trees they don't want to see their broken trampolines they don't want to see that so um, we're more than happy to get fencing put up so um, the expansion, I don't believe, will affect a public road system. You're adding 35 sites and not 35 RVs come every single day. And for about two, three months out of the year, those 35 sites will be full, and that'll be it, and then they will go away until the next shutdown at the refinery or the next big project. So uh, is it affecting it? Probably not. Um, currently, um, out of those 35 um, long-term customers that may come in and stay for three, four months. We call them long-term. It is a short-term, but that's our definition of a long-term is somebody that stays for like a month. Um, they'll be staying there at the park. Right now, the ones that I have there, I have 35 customers there's right now out of my 53 sites. 1.15 people per rig. And with that, it is consecutive with the amount of cars they have or trucks. They don't have, maybe one site has two, but most of them only have one. So, um, and to basically, um, then we have some overnight traffic. Well, I don't know if you want to consider that one or two vehicles, but most, most overnight traffic is a truck with a trailer on behind or a motorhome with a tow behind it. So it's still basically one vehicle coming through. They don't unhook and go to town sometimes. <clears throat> sometimes they do. So uh, they're all different. So um, RV sites um, are actually also um, to prove that there's not that many coming in all the time is even our own sewer district in Butler County charges us 15% compared to 100% at a, as a residential home. So they too say, just like the rest of the United States, there's a standard and it says RV sites aren't, sites aren't full all year round. So we're only going to make them pay 15% of the sewer what would normally be charged. So um, I believe that um, kind of proves that we don't, we're not 100% full all year long. I wish we were, but we're not. Um, current RV park, um, we're directly south of Highway 54. Um, Jay already said noise. I, I can't even, I don't even have to really mention how much noise it probably happens. Jake breaks go on all the time. Um, 
but within our RV park, we have a 10 mile per hour speed limit and we're pretty strict on it. And I'm not saying someone doesn't come in there, but it isn't, we're not long going out and chewing them out and telling them, slow down. There's children out here. We can't allow that. And they all, oh, I'm sorry. You know, nobody's rude about it. They're all good people. Um, and that leads me to being quiet. Um, we do have, this is the back half of our handout that we hand out to every single RV customer that comes into our, our uh, park. One of our main things is, is quietness. We believe that um, RV, our RV park is not a big party house. Uh, there's another facility that allows that, and that'd be the state park. That's what they're there for. That's, we're not there. We're here to, to take care of our customers and to be quiet. So we try to keep that um, noise level down as much as we can. I have another one to pass out there. Um, left on Google. You're more than welcome to view it yourself. It was left a week ago and it even says who left it. And um, his review says, he only gave me a two. I just want you to know that it was a bad review. So, and he may think it's a bad review. We thought it was a great review. He says, the people there are friendly, but it's a bit ritzy. We thought that was cute. Quiet time is 8 p.m., which he's completely off on that, but we asked him to finally knock it off at 8 o'clock because the other customers were complaining. And he says, quiet time is 8, 8 p.m. to sometime a.m., and there is absolutely no noise. It's eerily quiet. Kind of uncomfortable silence blanking the park during the after hours. So if you got a, 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 a guy that comes into your park, that states that he's telling you right there that our park's quiet can't get any better review than that right there in my eyes so he may have given me a two but he gave me a darn good review so and i did tell him so i told him thank you so um so we also have a um, speaking of noise we have besides noise traffic of those 504 uh, 5450 vehicles that go by we also have an airport and a private landing strip just south of the park. So um, they're always taking off. You hear them come over the, over the park, it's noise. So um, not something that we're creating, but it's there. Um, we know that drainage has been a concern with our new expansion, but more, more than ever, the last few months has shown that there can be much rain to cause concern over. The current park sits higher in elevation than the, than the expansion will and um, it, will be, it will not be draining into the current park. The expansion area already has a drainage ditch on the far east side, which is like, let me find my mouse here, that right here where this road comes in here, there's a drainage ditch that runs all the way down the property. Up here, there are two coverts um, that the state of Kansas has put underneath that property, or that, that highway to drain into the ditch on the north side. Obviously, even the state of Kansas saw that there was a, a need to put an area for the water to drain. So right now, you know, you know we're going to we are planning on sloping it just enough that it runs to that drainage area to make sure that it does, and then it drains down that way. So I don't believe that that's going to be a concern um, when we get to it. Um, but the DOT maintains those, those culverts out front, and um, the other thing that will help maintain our drainage will be grass buffers. And uh, to be honest, if we're allowed to put gravel in, that will also be less impervious than um, asphalt or anything else. Um, so we think that that is also a good deal. And uh, if we are allowed to, uh, I know the gravel is not, a, here on the table tonight, but it is an issue. And the existing park is gravel. And, and we are going to ask that the, this expansion be gravel. And right now, if you look on the map, our entrance to our RV park is right here off the highway. So if this is all gravel and I've made to make this all pavement, they're still gonna drop off here, drive up the gravel and drive right out on the highway and the gravel anyway because I will only pave the expansion part that I'd love to be um, having um, Department of Transportation <laughs> come in and pave my roads. It'd be great. 
but uh, that's probably not going to happen. So, um, but we do know that that is a concern, and right now we believe that it's still the best option. Most of the businesses around us all have gravel, gravel parking lots. There's Kaffir Road, there's Connor Road, there's 13th Street, 14th Street. Um, this, this right here is a uh, DOT pull-off, completely gravel. All these, uh, this shared driveway is gravel. This driveway here is gravel. These driveways all around here, all gravel. Double T auction across the way, gravel. Triple, or um, the trailer place is gravel. The one down here is gravel. Uh, everybody around us is gravel except for the highway and Blue Stem Road. Otherwise, every single road around us is gravel. So um, I believe that gravel is not an issue uh, being our area. I think it's no different than any of the other businesses around us. Um, but once again, the 10-foot grass, grass bar barrier and any trees that we can leave, we sure want to do. We love trees in our park, and if you have a chance, you drive through our park, you'll see that we have, you can see it on here, we have, we have trees. We want trees. People want trees. They don't want just gravel. They want trees. So, um, so inside the grass buffer, you know, like he said, will be a 20-foot roadway. That's 30-foot from, from the neighboring property lines and on the north end right here and on the south end will be the curves to come around and obviously you, you must know that with a curve you're going to have more in one area than, than 30 foot. It will probably be more to 40 to 45 foot on those areas um, away from the property lines. So there will be a lot more grass area than it appears there will be. All the RVs will be inside the roadway, not on the outsides on the border, but on the inside. And so um, I do know that Deer Grove RV Park will conform to all codes and rules and set forth the, uh, that El Dorado or Butler County um, asks us to do, and we will, we will stand by those. So if you have any questions, I can help you, and I know that my husband will probably get up and talk too. Your fence, is it mm -hmm. on it? One side, two sides. Okay, what sides. what here's what we will do on our fence. Okay, so obviously this is our park right now. I won't be putting a fence here. Right. Because that that's an expansion. Sure. So I already have I, I will not be putting one over on existing here. Um there's this here, back here on the um, south end of the existing park. Uh, where it's needed to put new, that's needed to be new there. So that will be new there, and we will follow it around here. We will go by the um, Blue Stem properties over here, go clear up by the church, and we will separate out by when we split, do the slot split of these two, <coughs> we will um, put a fence there, and we will put a fence down through here, and then run it where we do not have one existing in the park to um, up to our, this is a storage unit right here that is in the park, and we'll probably put it to up to there. You're talking about a solid fence. Solid, a, a solid wooden cedar fence. No, no looking through okay. it. No. And no my water. last question, you, you mentioned your drainage. Is mm -hmm. that going to be engineered drainage by someone that has worked with that type of thing before? You usually have to hire some stuff because the uh, county can not, will not allow you to do some stuff by yourself. So, Okay, thank you. And, and if, if you do have more questions that are more to do with drainage issues and stuff, I can tell you that he's much better at it than I am. So, uh, I have a question. Uh, you touched on this, I think, a little bit too, but I don't know if I heard everything. Where, how do you define your temporary housing you call it temporary or what's that I call long terms that um, I call them long term so there are usually a refinery worker they may not be working at the refinery but they're a worker of some sort in the community most of those come in and they need to be here two three months some are here longer and so we call it we call it for our book work purposes we call it long term because um, short term is overnight or two three nights so it's still short term. They're not living here for a year lease. They don't go to a, a rental house and do a re year lease. They, they don't, don't park. Want to. They don't yeah. park there and go in town and live. They 
no, no, they're living in the RV and and they're staying there, and just like they do all over the United States now. So. Well, what about your usage summer compared to winter? Oh, uh, way more in the summer. I mean, which is it, how much? Fifty percent capacity, or what do you? Uh, last winter we had at one time we had four RVs in our current park. So if that tells you that, I mean, I can't tell you a percentage. I haven't done that, okay. but um, cool. it starts to pick up in March usually. Um, depending on the year, but yeah, I had four RVs through about a month and a half, two months in the, so, and part of that was because the, the shutdown last year lasted to, into November, so I had some guys still there into late November, and then December they started to pull out and, and leave and disperse, and then you get some people, <coughs> um, we get a lot of like snowbirds in from mm -hmm. uh, the north, and they'll be flying to the south, and so they will stop. Sometimes they stay for a month, sometimes they stay for a week, just because um, maybe it's not right to move on yet. They know, or they have doctor's appointments here, and that's, believe it or not, a lot of people make doctor's appointments in this town. They found out it's a great place to get their doctor care. So I, I have a couple out there right now that stayed for another month to get cataracts removed. What do so. you, where do you uh, anticipate for your expansion as far as you see go you think it'll be full uh, half full what are you thinking i i think that um let's just say it was finished tomorrow i'd say that in late july it will be completely full because that's when the shutdown workers will start showing up otherwise it'll sit there and very few people will go into it because i don't need it right now i'm not full right now i don't need it but just for that short little time when those refinery workers come in and or other workers, but they're the ones that fill you up. So, or pipeliners or something like that. I have pipeline people here right now too. Um, it's so varied, you know, Velocity is here right now. They're all over town. I don't know if anybody else has seen them, but they're everywhere. I have several Velocity people in the park and they kind of come and go. They do their job, they move on and the next crew comes in. But uh, so you, you don't fill up all the time. Okay, so I have 35 out of the 53 sites right now that, are, that have people in them. And, and then I get some for overnight that come in and fill in overnight. So, so. Any other questions for me? Just curious, uh, go like say for example, last year during your prime month, um, do you have kind of ballpark idea how many people you'd turn away because you didn't have room for them? Or? Um, yeah, um, I've turned, well, um, I can't tell you how many workers I turned away because I couldn't put them in. So, but, um, you know, they found other places and, and when they find another place, they don't come back. So, and that goes with an overnighter. They usually don't come back either. You turn them away unless they've been coming to you for years. And, and they end up being friends, you know, because you just get to know them. But usually you lose them. They don't come back. So And so I'd say that we turned away. I had a list of 30, 40 workers that I turned away. And, and then the overnight traffic, it'd be three, four a night you'd turn away. So easily because there wasn't room for them. So really the question I had was on the map there, uh, just south your border property of uh not your south border but i guess it'd be hastings is south border mm -hmm. uh, your shared border mm -hmm. is that delineation right there is there any kind of fencing there now there will be no there, no it's just chain link not, right now right. it's a chain link fence okay so in your park right now so if it was standing close to that <coughs> property line i could see the back of their property to you, the you, house or you can mainly see, yeah, like uh, the there's like a red building and then um, maybe okay. part of the house, not much of it. Okay, so, so no fence or natural barrier for vegetation. Not right now, okay. so no, we've kind of been waiting on this okay. so for a few years to do it, so it needs to happen. It's, it's, so. Thank you. Yeah. I'll add a quick comment. You guys mentioned uh, turning away people during the shutdown periods. That's typically when we get a lot of calls from our code enforcement officer because without a special use permit, RVs are not allowed in mobile home parks. And that's about the time of year that we start having RVs pop up in our mobile home parks within city limits 
or appearing behind various commercial structures in town. So we've actually witnessed some of that uh, in city limits, that if they can't find somewhere, they start popping up everywhere. And, and I work at the refinery, so I mean, I understand this. And we had several, you know, probably more than 20 individuals that had approached the plan about places to stay because mm -hmm. your place was full and they don't like to stay at the lake for mm -hmm. whatever reason. And, and those people, unfortunately, went to Tawanda. And I lost them forever. Yeah. So and, so and they'll never come you back. You know, it's in, in our shutdowns, you know, we have a big one every one's on a four year cycle, one's on a five year cycle. Mm -hmm. And we will have 1,500 to 2,000 people that'll be here mm -hmm. six to eight weeks, and 90% of those have their own travel trailers mm -hmm. and then they stay by themselves you know i saw a lot of these numbers where they're two people but all of the people that we deal with they're by themselves like they most they need their own space and mm -hmm. and most of them they get off work they spend a little bit of money in town and they go home mm -hmm. and if they don't stay here they stay in another town and i think we lose out on a lot of, of revenue and mm -hmm. you know and th those jobs are pretty high paying i mean they're making a pretty good living and they they want to stay somewhere nice that's quiet and mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's something I have, you know, a lot of firsthand knowledge of that, that we got a lot of questions about places that they could stay because okay. there was nothing available. So, any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, at this time, we will open the public hearing. Who would like to speak first? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. Planning Board, uh, my name is Ray Cannell. And uh, I grew up here in El Dorado. I know a number of you from uh, being in school here and working here. The last 42 years I've been an attorney uh, with my father and my brother. And a good part of that 42 years of practicing law dealt with zoning. And it's an emotional issue. Everybody says, well, it's fine to have that, but not in my backyard. And uh, tonight I'm here representing one of those individuals who has a significant investment in their home. Uh, David and Christine Hastings, uh, and they're concerned about this expansion. And to short circuit it, if the planning board would recommend to the city commission that this improvement would cut off where the existing uh, RV park is, and I'll, I'll just have an arrow here, if you would just come straight across and not allow it to go further north, because the Hastings own this property. That's their home. Um, that's their backyard. And so this will be uh, adjacent to and have 35 potential residents uh, living in their backyard. And so if, if you would recommend to the city commission, let's not expand so far north. Let's, let's stop the expansion here. Let's go ahead and put in a privacy fence because as the question noted, there's no fence along the backyard of the Hastings now, so they can see all of these travel trailers. Uh, they get all the dust from the gravel that's uh, from the south wind. They get all the noise. Uh, and people, as you see, there's two travel trailers right here parked adjacent to their backyard. Uh, those people are looking in their backyard all the time. Uh, so they're invading their privacy, their quiet enjoyment of their home. And uh, so we would recommend, and quite frankly, if they're interested in being a good neighbor, I'm surprised that that privacy fence hasn't been built <coughs> before. It's just open. Um, but we'd like to make a, a recommendation to the planning board that one of the conditions of an SUP, a special use permit, would be a, a privacy fence. We have some pictures. Even with a privacy fence, you can see the tops of the mobile homes, or you can see tops of the travel trailers, you can see tops of the vehicles. It, it doesn't screen uh, the activity uh, on the adjacent property. The other question that was raised was the drainage. It was a great question. The last time it was in front of you, uh, David Hastings expressed concern because all of the drainage along that gravel uh, parkway for the current RV drains north onto their backyard. And we have pictures tonight we'll share with you that show that it makes for a lake in an unusable backyard whenever it rains. And as you know, the last 30 days, that's about all it's done. And you asked uh, the applicant at your last meeting if they had to address the drainage or they would address the drainage. 
and uh, they said they would. Well, they haven't to date. And if they were serious about this application and making sure that it didn't neg negatively affect the adjoining landowner, I, I submit to you that it would have been done. And one of the conditions of the special use permit should be that they have an engineered, um, and David, I don't know the correct term, but an, an engineered drainage program so that it gets uh, off of their property, existing and expansion, and does not drain onto the Hastings property, because uh, currently it does. Um, I, I submitted, and I don't know, Jay, and, and the planning board whether you got it, but I, I outlined for you our concerns um, for the Hastings with this expansion. And uh, I, I asked David Sungren to do a real estate evaluation uh, on this expansion on the value of the Hastings property because uh, it's significant and it's important. And so I'm gonna ask David Sungren, who's a, uh, a real estate broker here in Butler County and who grew up just a couple miles from where I grew up to share with you uh, his observation of this property and his professional opinion of what this expansion will do to the value of the Hastings property. And I think you need to take that into consideration both as a matter of right and as a matter of law. Before you sit down, I have a question, if that's okay. Sure. Um, was the RV park there when they bought their house? You know, the, the, it's, this is my understanding of the answer to that question. Um, I believe it was there. It was not owned by the Dunges. It was owned by someone else. And I'm not sure how active it was, but the Hastings obviously bought their home w with the fact that that was in the back part or the south part of their property. So great question. Um, now, Dunges bought it and I think ex expanded the use and application and the number of people that have used it. And now they want to do more. And um, what I'd like to do, if it's all right, is have David Sunger and talk about the value. And then I come back up and share a couple more comments with you and answer any questions that you might have. Okay? David? David Sandrin, 840 Par Drive in El Dorado. We get an eye. Yes. Okay. Good. Okay. Okay. Um, and I can read this, or let you guys read it, uh, or I can just tell you about it. I think it'd probably be about as quick for me to just read it real quick, if if uh, you would prefer. Looking for direction. It's a summary. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Uh, I met with the Hastings, <coughs> looked at their property. Uh, you know, one of the things that I talked about in here and um, that are things, things that affect values of real estate. And uh, there are several uses in this area, uh, but um, uh, I focused on because uh, I was looking at the uh, impact of value on the Hastings property, which is a residential property. Uh, and so when, when we do that, we look at things that um, affect residential properties. One of those terms is a local undesirable land use. They're called LULUs. Uh, and most of those negatively affect residential properties. Uh, those uh, basically affect three human senses. They affect sight, hearing, and smell. And uh, some of those um, 
would be that you could uh, call a LULU would be a correctional facility. Uh, they, pr they affect the site, people's, you know. Um, uh, another could be an airport. It affects the hearing, you know, it's a, it's a noise that people don't like. Uh, one could be a refinery that, uh, and, and refineries could be said to affect sight, noise, and smell. And those of you that have lived in El Dorado a long time uh, can remember the times when everybody called El Dorado a refinery town because of the smell. And the reason I say that is that the refinery has done such a good job the last 10 or 15 or 20 years that I can't even, I don't even hear people say that anymore. But at one time, uh, you could, you know, about every week or every night, you could smell that refinery. Haven't smelled it for years. So anyway, but, but so that's what we talk about. Um, you know, residential subdivisions, and these, this is not a subdivision, but new residential subdivisions have protective covenants that are designed to protect neighborhood values. Uh, they address matters like house type, size, density. Density is an important thing when you're talking about a residential neighborhood. Uh, and so uh, that's why the more expensive homes generally have larger lots. Uh, there are estate type properties that uh, don't have another residence right next to them. Uh, and those are put into place to protect uh, residential integrity. Uh, the uh, pacing property is certainly influenced by the location of the RV park. Uh, and I think that the uh, proposed expansion is going to uh, negatively affect it more. I think uh, anybody that would want to buy that property, and I think if that property were put on the market, uh, now or later, that it's going to be on the market longer than a house that is not next to an RV park. I, th I think that uh, any realtor and any of you that have bought a house would probably recognize or realize that. Uh, so, some of the things that I saw there uh, the, uh, that pertain to site, uh, there's only a chain link fence between the properties, and that's the uh, property that uh, is currently an RV park and, and the property that is proposed. Um, and I took some pictures, and the pictures you guys have there, uh, and even uh, actually the uh, current park is built up, and you can see there's about a one or two foot drop between it and Hastings property. Now the other uh, proposed area is going to be level with Hastings and actually the drainage goes from the current park down through Hastings property and it goes towards the highway and it goes through the proposed area as well. And you can see debris in the fences there uh, where it leaves and, and we've had, you know, I mean in all fairness we've had the uh, storms of, of 30 years, uh, but, but there's been, there was a lot of water there currently and running through there when I was out there. Uh, uh, so so that the, uh, the, the uh, drainage is definitely a problem. The fencing because of the site is a problem, but the, uh, the current one, and I don't know that that has, is to be addressed or not as a proposed, but the current uh, chain link fence, uh, the motor homes are right next to the fence and you can, I mean even the windows are above the fence. And for a residential property, you know, that's, that's undesirable uh, in, in my opinion as a realtor. Uh, density. Uh, Density, the number of living units increases the noise, movement, and smell of other human activity, and those aren't positives, as we have said. Um, I think that the expansion is going to radically change the Hastings backyard because now instead of it being on um, one or two sides, it's going to be on another side and it's going to come right up to within 10 or 15 feet of the corner of the house. 
and his uh, deck is right on the corner of the house or right on the side of the house. Um, so the county appraiser values this property at $134,580. I put a graph that uh, I pulled off realtor.com, interestingly enough, and it would take a, a lot of time <coughs> and a lot of expense to do a proper appraisal on a before and after value on a property like this uh, because you would have to do a lot of studies about particular RV parks because everything is different, every location and everything else. So, and I couldn't find any studies. Usually uh, the Appraisal Institute and in different places has studies on landfills and different things like that and you can uh, really get into that. There haven't been any. I think, I, and I think the reason is most RV parks are pretty new. Uh, it's a newer concept and there just haven't been any studies to look at uh, that I could find. But I did find things that dragged down, Lulu's, the things that dragged down the value of your home. And I put that on the uh, last page of this letter. And they're pretty interesting. It says a hospital uh, next to you would uh, hurt your, uh, drag down your home value about 3.2%. Uh, has a shooting range power plant, funeral home, cemetery, homeless shelter, high renter concentration, which is what I think is the closest uh, to something that an RV park would be, strip center, or bad school. Pretty interesting that a bad school is the highest uh, thing that, that pulls down property, but residential property values. But high renter concentration is fairly high there. So what I did, just as an illustration, was took the county appraised value and using their figures and the realtor.com figures uh, at 13.8%, you get about an $18,500 loss in value. You can make any figure uh, lie. I could uh, say, well, this is worse or this is better. You know, I'm just going to call it at that. You guys can use your own. But uh, I just, I use that as an illustration. Uh, the pictures are in here. I'll stand for questions if you have any. I, I have a question. Um, right now, that's already the manufactured housing. Is that right? The zoning? Yes. On the existing park. Right. So, I mean. That one's on C1. But regardless, I mean, yeah. we're still going to have the high renter concentration, whether we do the proposed part or that's correct. Right? I mean. I mean, I guess that's where, where I'm kind of at, that either way, whether they do that or not, that value is where it is. There's going to be more impact sure, with sure. the expansion. And, yeah. and, I, and, and I, I understand, <coughs> but I mean. But there is some already. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Sunger? Yes, sir. Can, can you help us understand uh, how far, I mean, obviously adjacent uh, property development land use would have would have the most impact but how far how far away from that property do some of those factors uh, and let's just concentrate on the on the high rental uh, concentration okay. element how, how how far how how far does that ring of influence carry in your opinion uh, well okay yeah. A lot of the new subdivisions, residential subdivisions, are built in areas where it may be a busy street or something, but on a busy street they put a commercial, they put commercial properties in front, and then they put concrete, nice concrete walls. These are the, and, and good residential subdivisions right there. I think, I think to answer your question, what the differences are, and they're all different, it is, um, and I don't know if any of you have gone out there and looked at it, that would be my suggestion because you can always say, okay, how far away is it? And, and I have this real good uh, instance and I'm, I'm gonna use it on you because I think it, as you know, in zoning, right now you and I are okay, right? We aren't, it's not bothering you. It's probably not bothering you too much right now. And you're my friend, so I can do this. But right now, I'm probably bothering you a little bit. And 
That's what, I, that, <laughs> that's, that's what I would say with this. How, how, and that's a, kind of a joke, but it's really not. Uh, because how close is, okay, if, um, if the Hastings didn't see anything, uh, then it's, if so it, to me it would be okay. And now these are my opinions. If, um, uh, if they didn't have any here, if they didn't hear it, anything, and that goes, but, but if they didn't hear any noises, if there wasn't any dust or any of those things, it's okay. I think in order to do that, um, you have to have some screening, maybe some landscaping, maybe set it back. Uh, you know, as you can see in those pictures, uh, those uh, mo motor homes in the, uh, the, not the proposed, but the current are right next to the fence. And uh, so for most residential people and most value, uh, that would be unacceptable. But with the proper screening, with the proper setback, with the proper drainage, uh, it would have minimal impact. It would have less impact than, does that, does that answer your question? Thank you. Any other questions? And, and thanks for letting me do that. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, David. Um, David had suggested, and I wrote a letter and tried to get it to you sooner, but uh, we would request respectfully that the planning board go to the site, uh, look at the backyard, look at the proposed uh, adjacent expansion area, and get a feel for what we're talking about. Um, as I said, I've been doing this a long time, and most of the time, planning boards will go, whether they're the county or another city, to the site and, and look at it and that'll give you a good feel. Uh, we think the proposed uh, expansion that goes all the way to the back of the Hastings house is, is unfair, is unrealistic, is not right, and we would request that you go to the site, look at it, and I think you'll come to the conclusion that moving it back to the line of the existing RV is fair to the applicant as well as to the Hastings home. And uh, ironically, in the earlier application, uh, this area was presented by the applicant, and it has the area uh, at the location that I'm proposing that the planning board approved. It moves it back to the south. Hey, Ray. That was actually an error I made. Oh, is it? It was a okay. mapping error that I made. It well, corrected. It, I, yeah. thought it, I thought it was yeah. from the applicant, but it, nonetheless, it was in the application packet that went to the city commission the last time. So It was correct. So I'm, I'm simply saying, if you want the extra spaces for workers, I live and work in El Dorado. I'd like to have the workers stay here. If you want it for our economy, I've been involved with the Chamber and Elder and Inc. and all the rest of them. I have no opposition to, if they move it back. And neither do the Hastings. They don't want to be bad neighbors, but at the same time, they don't want 35 additional uh, RVs right next to their backyard and right next to their house. Um, the letter I sent you had a photo, Mr. Chairman and, and Planning Board, of what it looks like now. And, and those RVs are right next to the back uh, of, of the uh, Hastings property. It's open, you can see them, and unfortunately they can see into theirs. And it also has drainage. And uh, I'm gonna pass out a number of pictures that you can uh, distribute uh, but it's a lake back there, and uh, and all of the drainage is coming off of the RV park, and all you do, are you, all you're doing is adding to that problem. Um, the other thing I'd ask is if any of you know the applicants. I think by your rules and regulations, that's supposed to be disclosed at the public hearing. So, uh, David, do you know the applicants, uh, the Dunges, and have you had any conversations about this project with them before the, this evening? Okay. Yes. I'd ask you the same question. The only time I met them was when they were here the first time. Okay. I know them, but not personally. Okay. Gerald? No. Brad? No. Steve? I'm looking, I'm wondering if the, if, uh, the young lady was a student of mine. Not sure. um, Mrs. Hastings? Yes. yes. Christine, is that? Jones? Yes. She's shaking her head. Okay. Now, she's the 
the landowner that's opposed to the proposed expansion, but the Dunges, uh, Mrs. Dunges, uh, Natalie was up here before. Do you know them? Yeah, she doesn't want the Dunges. No, do not know them. Okay, well, that, that's a question that I think is appropriate and I appreciate your candid responses. Um, what I'd like to do is entertain any additional questions that you have, I have but, but I think our position, yes, Joe. E even if it's moved back, like what you're saying, is that gonna cure the water problem? Well, I think they need to do something to cure the water problem. In my mind, and I'm a layman, I think they need to have some drainage along the south, excuse me, along the north part of the existing park and the north part of the expansion that's going to divert the water over to the east and but not allow it to go on to the, the dungeons. Don't they own the property, property clear to the highway? I'm sorry, yeah, don't to the highway. The property clear to the highway? Yes. Why couldn't they funnel it over on their own property out to the highway? They could, and that they would be appropriate. Berm, they would, put a berm behind mm -hmm. and, and that leads house. me to a question I have for maybe Jay or Scott, because when I built my home, it was kind of in a low place, and so I was asking about all the water that was draining on my place here in town, and I was told on all the Zachary, it's every landowner for themselves. Is that true? I couldn't speak to the year range your house is built. Uh, these days with new subdivisions, uh, we require the planning process, and usually the preliminary plat will have topographic information so that we can figure out where the drainage is gonna go, how we're gonna use roads to move it away, and then So since this there. is a commercial thing, it may be that they do need to take care of the drainage. And so how we operate with Butler County in this case, uh, we look at it from the land use side and the rough site plan. They, just like us in the city, they have a very specific site plan process that they go through. It's, it's more or less a checklist before any development permits are uh, issued. So uh, they have it on their checklist to review the drainage patterns, just like we would. And that's where that part would be reviewed, the finer details, if there's engineering involved. So that's back to my involved. question, yeah. is that this, the drainage would be engineered to make sure that it doesn't create a problem. It would be what Butler County requires. Now, on our commercial properties in town, sure. Yeah, okay. And, and Steve, to protect the process, I think rather than just approving uh, an expansion and in, in a particular description, you, you need to put conditions and they need to be part of the written special use permit so that they can be enforced. Uh, and instead of saying, well, let's leave it up to Butler County or, well, the applicant says they'll do it, so we won't require it, that's unacceptable and I think uh, not very prudent. So if you approve the expansion, my, my request would be on behalf of the Hastings is that you move the north part of that proposed expansion back so it's level with their existing uh, park, that you require a wooden fence for site, um, a buffer, that, that you go ahead and required that they have drainage uh, engineered so that none of the runoff from the existing park or expansion park is, is going on to the Hastings property. And uh, that the lighting, you're gonna add four new lights, not be on their backyard, the Hastings backyard. Um, and I think if you do those things, the, the Hastings are all, you know, they, they won't oppose any further the expansion. But if you aren't, and you're gonna allow it to be in their backyard, um, and the other thing is the roadway, we think ought to be asphalt because that's what your code requires. Uh, they're asking for a variance, but there's a reason that the city requires that you have an asphalt roadway. Uh, what they wanna do in their proposal is they want to take all of these uh, people that reside in this new area and there'll be a circle, but they're exiting right there along the Hastings property. If you look, that's their roadway. Well, if it's gravel and you got 35 more units occupied, theoretically 70 more vehicles, uh, that's a lot of cars going back and forth uh, right next to their property. So uh, those would be the requests uh, that you go out and take a look and satisfy yourself to the concerns that we're, we're, we're bringing to your attention and that you uh, approve it, but move it back and put those written conditions on it. 
Thank uh, you. I, I do. I, I have a question. I sure. did go out and look at it. I didn't go on private property the first time we did this, so I, I did go look at it, and I wanted to clarify. I, I, I was confused when you said something about the drainage plan for the existing RV park. Did you say that that's what they needed to do as well as the proposed? Well, because I guess that wouldn't be part of our. I don't think we could put that stipulation on a special use permit. Okay. T technically, I think you can put conditions on the uh, requested expansion that you feel are fair, reasonable, and uh, protect the values of the adjoining landowners. And if that means that this area right here has some kind of uh, drainage system that's, a, that's incorporated with the expanded area to assure that the water from this commercial development is not being dumped on the Hastings property, I think you have a legal right to do that. And that, that would be my legal opinion. So you can ask, Ashlyn's here, she can clarify that, but after 42 years of doing this, uh, I think you have a legal right to do that, okay? And and that's one of the, the trade-offs, that's the condition. Good question, thank you. Any other questions? Uh, I've also viewed the property, not on the private property, but drove out there myself and looked at it. Thank you, Steve, okay. Well, I think it's helpful, and uh, I've done three or four zonings in the county this uh, last year, and all, all of them, the planning board, went out and, and viewed the site because it was important. Uh, and this obviously is important to the Hastings, so thank you. Well, in full disclosure, uh, 22 years in the cable TV industry allowed me to set foot in that trailer or that home RV park for years. And I can tell you without a doubt that what it looks like now, if they don't like that, they sure as heck wouldn't have liked it when Norm Frost had it. Because uh, it was, I mean, Norm was a very nice man. I like Norm a lot, but they've pumped a lot of money into that place and made it. I mean, I, there's, it's not perfect, but it, it's a uh, uh, light years above what it used to be. I, and you know, the, the the two points are well taken. Is we're not objecting to how they operate it. We're not complaining about. Uh, you know, its current condition, we're simply saying, if you want to expand, then here's some respectfully conditions that would be fair to the, the Hastings, because it's going to devalue their property, if not 18%, according to the expert realtor, at least a percentage of money. And, and that's not fair, because they're not getting any income from the expansion. Before I leave, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to give you a packet of photos that the Hastings have taken over the last 30 days that show the backyard, show the areas in the, in, both in daylight and in dark. They have an existing um, wall, I, I, I guess I'd call it a, a screening fence that's solid, and you can see that all of, the, all of their RVs are up above, so it doesn't screen uh, the fact that you know they're there and you can see them and you can hear them and they can see you. Any questions before I sit down? Mr. Cannell, I have one. Sure. Uh, I have a question. Sure, David. I, I probably know the answer already, but I'll, I'll ask it anyway. Um, there, to my knowledge, would you agree that there are no uh, stipulations or restrictions by the county that would keep the Hastings from building a fence? No. Uh, they're, on their property, they could. Uh, and they have not done that. And obviously, that's that's an option. I guess they were of the opinion that um, the RV park is quite a bit higher uh, that they'd have to build a ten foot fence on the back of their property just to screen the existing RVs that are there looking in their backyard. Um, and so they haven't. But yeah, there wouldn't be any prohibition against that. And if the planning board in the city ultimately decides that they aren't going to require screening and put that as part of the special use permit, then that's one option they have. Well, I think the city of El Dorado, I mean, their fencing and screening 
requirements do not apply. Right. I mean, we're, we're looking at land use. So right. we're, we're, we're kind of speculating as we consider whether or not there would be any stipulations regarding screening above and beyond what the, what the applicant has, has already uh, agreed to. Um, City of El Dorado requirements uh, allow essentially a, a six foot uh, fence height uh, and, and I believe an eight foot by special use. That is correct. Uh, yeah. Consideration. So uh, I don't know if the county's if the county's regulations are similar. I don't know if they did six foot, then it wouldn't have any effect at all on screening the the two RVs and, and the rest of the uh, traffic that goes through that park because that would that would only go about three feet above um, the base of their RV current RV. Uh, that's the problem. If you don't specify then uh, you can say, okay, the applicant said they were going to do this. And if they don't, there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, my, my opinion is, in good faith, they, they should have put some screening up on the back of the Hastings property now because they, they knew that was an issue and a problem. And they should have had the drainage engineered and have an answer for you and say this is a plan and this is what we're committing to and put it in the special use. They haven't done either one. so. That's, that's what gives us concern. But in the context of existing conforming, non-conforming use, whatever the case, we, we can't sit here and, and declare that, they're, that, that the RV park has been in violation of, of any, particular, any Correct. particular codes or ordinances by the county. Correct. It's just and, a matter of, of common courtesy. Exactly. And, I, and, and we're not making a complaint in that regard that okay. they aren't in, in compliance. We're simply saying if you want to be a good neighbor, and if you say this is what you're going to do, then why not do it? But the, am I to understand, though, that Dawn does this uh, proposed fence screening that, that she laid out following the mouse across the screen? There, she's talking about a solid six foot privacy fence just to kill the headlights moving in and out of the park. She's not talking about putting up a penitentiary wall to, so that they can never see uh, RVs at that, all. That's correct. That's so, correct. And you'll see from some of the pictures. As yeah, they're passed. I, I mean, I don't even know if a 10 foot wall would block at all. I mean, uh, no, the question from David was if the Hastings would put a fence on their property, they're so much lower that they'd have to be 10 feet in order to get to the six foot right. level to, to screen the lights. That's what I was saying. But they're not opposed to the six, a six foot fence height on Deer Grove's property. That's correct. Okay. They're not opposed That's to that. That's what I was asking. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Connell, my understanding was there was going to be a six-foot solid fence plus a ten-foot landscape buffer. Yeah, and what is that? Is that well, it's a little confusing. <laughs> what they're saying is, Brad, from the fence to uh, the roadway inside the park, they're they're going to have ten feet so that it doesn't have the roadway right next to the oh, okay. the fence. Okay. And in that ten feet, they're going to put some cedar trees. Uh, I haven't seen a plan. I haven't seen a proposal, but there again, if they're offering to do that and you think that's fair and appropriate to the adjoining landowners, you ought to put that as a condition in writing in the special use permit so it gets done. Okay? Yeah, thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Jay, didn't we have stipulations for the setback buffer, the fence, and drainage, and, uh, no impact on adjacents in the first go on this? The 30 feet and then the 10 foot landscape is required by ordinance. Okay. So that's not a an issue is debatable. The fence was optional that they have offered as a condition, if you'd like to do that. Thank you. And, and the confusion, because I called David Alfaro and I said, have you had uh, a review of this property and what your building requirements going to be? And he said, no. It's confusing when you guys go three miles outside your city limits and you decide, okay, we're going to approve this uh, zoning request, but we're going to leave it up to the county to do whatever they think is appropriate, it, it, it gets really confusing. And so I'm encouraging you to put in writing and even Jay note in the, the ordinance provisions, hey, this special use operation has to be at least 10 foot from fence to the roadway and it has to be a 30 foot, you know, setback and, and those kind of things so that the county knows that that's part of your special use permit, okay? Thank you Mr. Very Connell, much. that is a bit confusing. David has received all the information that we've received tonight. 
And uh, when we do these special use permits, we do pass along all the details and the ordinances. Great. So we thank keep you. him briefed. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. If you'd move the north end back and make those specific requirements, we have no further objection to the proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Please state your name. My name is Tim Donges. I am a co-owner of Donges Properties LLC, which owns Deer Grove RV Park. Um, the drainage issue keeps coming up. Um, I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with uh, Natural Resource Conservation Service. Uh, prior to doing all this, I met with Jeff out the uh, Natural Resource Conservation Service that's located here on the west side of town on Enterprise Road. And we actually looked at this on a large scale at Topo Maps. So I'm sure y'all are kind of familiar with the Topo Maps. Pretty, pretty simple for the most part. But from basically about the, the, the only drop off we really have on this on this proposed area is on that north one third area one third of the property from the north one third all the way to the south over a mile is considered flat it's less than 10 foot change we come into El Dorado I want you to picture El Dorado how much topography changes are there within our town of El Dorado and the reason why I'm familiar with Natural Resource Conservation Service is because I own a farm and I've built waterways. So some of you may have been involved in engineering in the past. Have you heard of gabion structures? Um, use gabion baskets where you put rocks in them and you probably see them for erosion control in areas. I've helped build those. Build them myself on my own farm under government contracts and have been approved. Um, this particular property, when I took a transit out and checked it um, on the south end, from east to west, there's only one inch difference. Up to, and this is because I need a clearing to use the transit. The next big clearing up there, it is level. So the only area we actually have any drop off, which you can visually see when you're out there, is about where our existing park line is. That's the amount that actually drops off. The rest is flat from there. And so to actually address any type of drainage on this property is real easy. I mean, we're only talking one inch difference on two thirds of it. And so um, I had planned on sending the water, the majority of the runoff we have, to the east because there is an existing ditch there. It's almost like there was a road there at one time. It came up through there like a lane. And that existing ditch runs all the way down behind the church to the west of the church there to the highway ditch. And so it's a real easy drainage solution it's not I mean it, when you're looking at doing something it's it's minuscule um, the existing drainage that uh, if I was to do nothing with the property like how it currently sits the water just runs off the hill into my rental house up there at the at the highway and stays on and stays on our own property it doesn't go over on the Hastings now and if I didn't do anything, say I went in there and made it a field, a crop field, my water would still stay on my property if I was to clear everything and farm it today. Now, Mr. Hastings' property, which is located here, and he stated earlier that, or, or Mr. Connell stated earlier that he was aware that there was an RV park there when he bought the property. This was all graveled all the way up through there. This is a road that came up through here. When he bought that property, it was all there. The only thing that was ever added by us was this east side right here, some trailers that are parked there. The rest of this was all there when I bought it. Most people didn't realize it was there because it was run down and wasn't, wasn't really being run as a, a good business in my opinion. And I know Mr. Uh, Sundgren come up earlier and we talked and I, and, and I will say I have been a licensed real estate agent in the state of Kansas for over 15 years. I have recently, this past year, put my license on a shelf because I just don't have time. And he's correct when he says, along highways, we generally have commercial first. Behind it says multifamily, and behind that says single family. That is normal layout if we're going to do a development in the city of Wichita. We're not in Wichita. We're in Elder, Kansas. And, and um, 
to me, having commercial run all the way up to the highway actually fits zoning more than anything than, than single family houses do on the highway itself. If we're if we're looking at that structure, the um, you know when we look at water, we'll go back to this again. Is water is looked at as a shared resource. That's how the EPA kind of views it. People have different opinions on certain things with it, but there's no doubt when I, if I build on this piece of land right here, when my water runs down that east side, goes underneath the highway, and ends up in the Walnut River, there's no doubt I'm impacting people downstream. Just like my farm does, because I farm it. Up north of the lake, there's no doubt the water that runs off my farm fields impacts the people that live in the city of El Dorado. Mr. Hastings' property, where his water runs off, his water runs off currently on my property to the east. I'm not here trying to flood out Mr. Hastings for, for any reason. I have no reason to want to do that to him. Um, so the water thing, if you, if you want an engineered report, you know, I don't know what it's going to look like. There's really not a, lot, not a whole lot to it. I mean, it's considered flat when we look at things from a top, topographical area on a large scale like we would farming or, or any other type of large development project, it's flat. So there's, and Jeff from the NRCS office stated that he sees it as a non-issue and he's trained professional in building waterways and, and things like that. So it's a non-issue non according to him. And I do have a larger diagram that maybe makes it easier than looking at that little thing that you have there on the screen. And I can show you my curves, or what Natalie was trying to describe earlier, is, let's see here, let's see where, there we go. Mr. Hastings' property is located here. If you see here, that we're actually, the green area on the corner is 25 feet from Mr. Hastings' property. And it's an additional these curves are not 20 feet. Those curves are actually 30 feet wide. Okay, so there's actually, we're looking at what's 25 plus 30. We're actually 55 feet from Mr. Hastings' property within the corners, which the corner that is closest to Mr. Hastings actually has a huge buffer already. Now we come south a little bit, then we come back to by where Mr. Hastings' buildings located, that is where the buffer becomes normal again because it's straight. We all know roads aren't 90s, so we got that curve to work with. And so there is additional buffer there already. And um, we, we have wanted for several years to build a fence there on the existing park area against Mr. Hastings, and I 100% agree there needs to be a privacy fence there, 100%. How tall that needs to be, you know, that's that's whatever y'all want to think about there. You know, I, I propose a six-foot fence. I seen at Menards, they have, I think their yard fence is 20 feet tall. So do you want a 20-foot tall fence? I mean, do you want me to trap water on Mr. Hastings' property so it can't run off onto me? Does he want do, do we want to build a swimming pool on Mr. Hastings' property with a tall fence? You know, how, 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 how much is too much, I guess, is what I'm getting at. But, uh, you know, I currently own several mobile home parks, and we're currently zoned to be able to put mobile homes in there right now. Is that correct? That's correct. I can build tomorrow. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Would you sooner have a mobile home park sitting there, or would you sooner have an RV park sitting there? Which one do you think is better for your community? That's all I got to say. I, I've got a question yes. before you sit down. Uh, is your proposed elevation of your new expansion going to be the same as what's there now? Because you said it's flat now, but are, are, is that going to be changed when you put your gravel in and, and all that? Um, thickness of rock, you know. Well, sure. I mean, I, I, is it, is, I assume it's going to match what's there. It is. Uh, it'll be similar. Um, 
rock that's used, everything. Sure. Uh, we usually put down an AB3 product, which you all might be familiar with if you're in engineering or building buildings. Um, I'm, I'm actually uh, a member of the operating engineers out of Kansas City, Missouri. If you're ever familiar with them, we build, you know, structures and create drainages and all that type of stuff. But anyway, um, if Mr. Hastings wants to take me to court because I run water onto his property, I guess he has that legal right to do that. You know, in a civil court, if he wants to do that, he can. But I, that's not my goal here. Uh, I'm a good neighbor. I'm not here to try to cause problems to anybody. So I plan on that water not going on Mr. Hastings' property. And uh, if you want to put a condition to come out and inspect the property after it's built, when it rains hard, I guess you can come out and do that. You know, there's just, you know, where does it end sometimes? Thank you. Go ahead. Okay. I just would like to address a couple of issues. Um, the first one would be the fence, and, and I'm assuming that you all know that you can build a fence in the city of El Dorado uh, up to six foot. If I decide I want to enclose my property with a fence in the city of El Dorado or any other property in the United States, I'm going to guess when the house is sitting 15 foot away from me, I can still see that house because it's only a six foot fence and that house is how tall. So I don't believe that saying we need to build a 10-foot fence or an 8-foot fence is really a, should not even be a factor. If we're putting up a fence, we're trying to at least correct some of the situation and make it right for our neighbors. Um, I think we all agree that the 6-foot fence on your guys' property is more than adequate. So okay. you know, I don't think there's a question there. Um, I, I, I have a few pictures here too. I'm only going to hand out the ones on the uh, the latest rain. I too see it. I, I took pictures of it. I pick, took pictures of mine draining, and um, we'll pass that around real quick. The only two that really um, really matter in this picture are the top two. So the rest are actually frontage issues, and and uh, I think we just need to let that one rest. It's not part of the issue. You'll see that this is actually running north. And that's our um, storage units. So you can see the water running out of the RV, existing RV park. And so then if you look alongside right here, that's right alongside this building right here. That's the Hastings property. You see a big pond right there. If that was me and I owned that property, I'd have probably taken the dirt that he piled all around our property recently and I'd have put it right there to help build that up so it didn't flood my garage. I'd have helped build up my own property, and I'd have done it, and I'd taken some personal responsibility of my own property. So uh, that that's just my opinion. I'm not trying to be rude, but you can see where ours runs, and the property in front of that storage unit is also my property, and it runs onto that property, and it runs on out to the highway. And does part of it run around Mr. Hastings? It, it sure does just like his runs onto my property. So I believe that we're splitting hairs on that water there. If we want to, if I can't go on his land and build up his property, I can't go over to that, that big red barn there and I can't put dirt around his building. And in my opinion, I would have done that a long time ago because I wouldn't want my foundation run by it. Um, so that, that I believe is a personal responsibility. Um, same goes with if you didn't, like seeing RVs, you should have put a fence up too. I agree, we should have done it as well. Splitting hairs there. We plan on doing it. Um, that park was built in 1983, and most parks in the United States were built 30, 40 years ago. Almost every single one in Kansas was. You got Air Capital in Wichita that was just built a few years ago, and you got one in Topeka that was just built a few years ago. The rest of them are old parks just like mine. They're all gravel. I have to compete with those parks in, in Wichita. I have to pe uh, compete with the one in Emporia. They're all gravel. If made to put pave, paved roads in, I have to try to raise my prices to have pay for that. Well, it just so happens I do have this beautiful lake out beside me that decided to compete against me too. <coughs> I pay taxes, they don't. So my prices have to stay down either even with them or below them in order to survive and not lose all my business to them so I can't raise rates. I can only do so much. 
Is that anybody's fault in here? No, it's not. It's just life. And you deal with it when you're in business. But um, I, I do know that um, um, some of the other Lulus, if we want to call them that, um, in our area are a sail barn that smells like cow manure. We have a horse barn that smells like horse manure. We have flies from all that that come in from it. It's not a good deal. Not that, it's not something that my park did. We have the, the traffic out front is probably the worst thing of our whole neighborhood. If I lived in the house out on the highway, I probably wouldn't like it either. Um, I do know that um, those are the few things that I wanted to bring up, and I guess I'll be done. So unless you have any more questions. Well, I'm sorry, I have one more. I have the valuations for the Hastings properties from 1925, or no, from 2015 to 2019. They uh, started out in 2015 at $1,115, and now it's 134000 I don't think they've went down in value because of my current RV park. They've actually went up about $19,000. So being that it's there right now has not affected their property with the county's values at this point. So. Thank you. Is it? Question. Yes. Um, have you had any discussions with Mr. Connell on the Hastings behalf about his proposed um, dropping of that? proposed expansion down to your current north property line like he was mentioning or I, I have not directly I would probably lose close to eight nine sites if I did it I, I really um, believe that with um, <coughs> so when Mr. Donges was speaking about the the road going around the curve um, if you're in a fire truck <laughs> you need a wider curve than just 20 foot to make it around so those are wider for a reason. It's not just for RVs. Motor coaches need more room. But if we have a fire emergency, we need wider curves for them to get around in order to get to where they need to be. And it needs to be on both ends. So knowing that most of that property where that they would like us to cut back off, that's where most of that road and all that area is. It's very minimal of that is going to be even RVs. So I, I guess I don't agree with that, so. Okay, thank you. I have a question. Two, I have a two part question. Has, has this water that's been coming down by these folks' is home, mm -hmm. is that a natural waterway that's been there for years? Uh, it comes from Hanks' mobile home park, which is, let me show, um, this area back here to the south, it flows into our park about right here, and it completely drowns us clear over here into Caffer Road. No, I'm talking and about. Then, and then I'm our talking. park, I've never known it to do anything else, either flows out the drive or goes down there. So, so it, even, it even goes, the water from the new proposal, where did that water go? Did it go back to the, by the Hastings house? The new proposal doesn't go near the, as far as I know, doesn't go to it the goes to Hastings the house. Or to the okay, that, that water it, had to go somewhere though, didn't it? it? It flows, there's a drainage ditch to the east and it flows out to the, um, there's a ditch that flows almost clear out to the highway, like right here. Okay, are, are you contending um, that the new proposal that's where will not add any water by their house? I do not plan on that even happening that way, no. That's what we've been saying. We are making sure that the, the grade stays, that it keeps flowing to where it is. So it, it flows down the drainage ditch on the, on the uh, eastern side of the property now. That's a natural we, drain for that. That was a, that's a man-made drain. It's a very deep ditch. So okay. I did not build it, but it's there. But it's very obvious. There's a road that drove, comes you know, back you to put, it. If you put... Uh, asphalt down and stuff like that, mm -hmm. you have less absorbent by the, by the ground. That is correct. Okay, that water's gotta go somewhere, but you're saying it's gonna go over to the east side, your extra water is gonna mm -hmm. go to the east side and go out, not through their property. That's what the plan is. Okay. okay. So that's what that's we what have 100% planned. Okay. And right now that's where it goes and that's where we continue to plan on it to go. Okay, so it shouldn't, it shouldn't increase the water by the Hastings. That is correct. Okay. That is correct. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak?
Okay, at this time we will close the public hearing. Discuss discussion amongst the commission. Uh, I got a question. I don't, I don't know whether I should ask it or not, but when I went to the county commissioners, was this all presented to them, the same material? By interlocal agreement, their job is to look at a proposal and see if it fits with their comprehensive plan for Butler County. Uh, so as part of that process, I sent it to David Alfaro, my counterpart at the county, and then he puts this in their agenda packet, presents the case to them. Um, so I don't know that they go into this to the degree that we do, because by agreement, we have the public hearings and the city commission meetings. Um, so I think they focus more on the comprehensive plan side of it. But they do all the site plan review. And so the staff will, at the staff level, um, if, if something is approved, then when it becomes time for them to apply for development permits, at the staff level, they'll then go down their site plan checklist and do their review, just as we do in the city limits. Yeah. So the fence is not required, but it's been offered by the applicant. Correct. I really don't think we should make it a condition of it. That's just my opinion. I think since since the fence has been offered by the applicant, I don't I don't mind making that stipulation. Um, I I do have a bit of a concern about about stipulating it more than six feet. Um, I don't I don't know what kind of legal mechanisms it would take um, be beyond beyond handshake, uh, but I I would certainly suggest that if if six feet is not enough height on that fence to, to satisfy the, the adjacent property owner that has concerns. Um, I, I, would, I would encourage an, an agreement to seek an alternate bid to consider an additional two feet uh, to be paid for by the adjacent landowner uh, as part of that initial fence install, which would be, which would be a, a, a reasonable means for, for both parties to be satisfied. Share that cost. I, I agree that that I like that. Um, we it had been mentioned to you know cut the the proposed expansion off at you know the the south line of their property. Based on the map that we have, it, it would take anywhere from twelve to fifteen of the campgrounds that are there now, and that's rough based on where the new road would be. I mean, I'm not sure you know that that's a you know, fair to the, the applicant to, to ask them to lose a third of, you know, what they're proposing. And, and we heard a lot about, uh, you know, property values and the 13.8% and, you know, you, the, you had mentioned the, the values of the last four or five years, you know, but I go back to when they bought the home, that RV park was already there. I, I mean, I could understand if you had the house, an RV park came in after the fact and, the, the, the values were what they were. I mean, I, I understand it wasn't in the condition it was in at the time, but it was already there. I mean, that's, you know, I, I do have to, you know, take that into account. One thing that's been mentioned over a couple of times is the impact of how many more RVs or vehicles would be in and out of the park, but I think it's a little bit of a misnomer to think that there's going to be a parade every day coming in and out of that park. Uh, the audience would have to attest to what the actual traffic per day is, but I can't even imagine more than a dozen at any given time. You know, they're not in a line to leave and in a line to get in. They're just one comes in, finds a place. They might be there for a month, two, week, whatever it is, and and they might lose to that afternoon or something like that. So I don't think it's like, you know, caravan coming in and out nonstop. Uh, there is definitely an impact. I mean, there's no doubt upon it. That's the point of their entire request is to add more vehicles. But at the same notion, it's not as if if they've got a total of, what is it, 80, if Mr. Connell's math is right here, 87 
RV spots. Is that yes? Is that correct? That's correct. Um, it's not as if 87 is coming in on Saturday afternoon and 87 is going to leave Monday morning, or you know, if you know what I'm saying, it's not going to be as a, I don't think. I think it's been portrayed as if there's just going to be a nonstop flow of vehicles there. I just don't see that happening. The people come in maybe on the day the turnaround is over. People are packing up, but they're gone that day, and you won't see them again until next turnaround. Yeah, you know they don't they don't all cut them loose on one day, and we stagger shifts at the plant to limit traffic even throughout town. So, I mean, you know that the, they run multiple shifts. So yeah, there is people that come home at you know six in the morning and they leave at six at night. I mean, that 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 we do twelve hour shifts. So I mean, I think that. And the majority of your, your guys that would like to stay there, you know, might be here for, you know, six to eight weeks for the duration of the turnaround. And then they're on to the next one. I mean, they're not sticking around if they're not making money. Well, I, I, I drove around that property as well. And, and, uh, and it does seem pretty calm and pretty quiet. I don't see where sight and sound is a big issue. But I see water everywhere. I mean, I don't know the, I don't know what it's going to can be done about the standing water and all these pictures. And I don't know who's responsible for it, uh, but there is that to me that, and I'm not too sure that's going to get solved. I'm not. We met in October about this, and I thought, and I thought the water was going to be taken care of then, and it's still an issue. When we left the meeting in October with the, on the same property, I was convinced it was going to be it wasn't going to be a problem. But I, to me, I see water. Everywhere. I don't but know what we can do about it. I think that the water would, would have been taken care of when they built the addition, right? I mean, is that is that not right? That I, I don't think we would have tried to fix the drainage before we put in the, the new gravel and the RV spots. Before there was an official approval. Right. I, yeah, I don't think they would have tried to fix, to, tried to address the drainage before it was approved. And maybe I'm wrong. And, and for the water, I mean, there's water everywhere. Sure. Yeah. I mean, this has been one of the second worst. Second way to, second yeah. way to May of all time. I mean, I, you know, I've got standing water in my neighborhood and it had a full flow drainage study. So, I mean, the, the, the pictures are bad. Don't get me wrong. I mean, and I'm not too sure the RV park is responsible for all this water. It, it, see, I'm not a, an engineer. I, I can't answer that either. You know. Any other comments? Questions? I think there ought to be some thought given when we're making our decisions to pass us up to the county commission that just like Mr. Don just says, he, he, don't, he don't have to put an RV park and he can clear cut the entire property and line it with mobile home. Um, done. And you don't have to ask for much to do that and it, what they're proposing, I mean, it's unfortunate Anytime you're in a situation, I feel for Hastings. I mean, I've got a situation next to me that I wish wasn't there. But at the same notion, I can't build a fence tall enough to block out what I don't want to see. It's just they do their thing, I do my thing, and we hope that we're not impacting each other in as little a negative impact as we can. But if they're willing to do the fence aspect of it to block sound bites from headlights. They're willing to do the, the vegetation buffer like it's been prescribed and they're not gonna impact, you know, it's, if it's put in that special use permit that they're not gonna impact any more on the drainage, you know, they're, that's what they're going towards is to make sure that it doesn't add anything else to the Hastings property. I can't see us how, you know, really how can we, how can we prohibit that? I mean, my only concern is the drainage, but we can't prove that it's them or that it's not. I mean, that's, I think that's the, you know, the issue that I have. And, and I don't know that, that doing this expansion would make it any worse or any better. I mean, I just, I just don't know how we determine that, you know? Well, if they don't level that land so that water goes out that east side, it should be okay. And if, if they do that, that, uh, that diverts it from, from this Hastings family. So 
but not all of it. Uh, I'm sure they're going to continue to get what they're getting. Because uh, that's, that's been a problem for several years. So, Jay, someone would go out as they're leveling this and take a look and say, yep, you're good. I couldn't tell you exactly step by step what Butler County does because I'm not a part of their operation or office. Um, but what I do know their procedures are very similar to ours in the city as far as our checklist and that we review drainage plans. You know, in our office, Scott Rickard looks at all the elevations and things of that nature. Um, so without the county engineer here or my counterpart, I, I couldn't give you the detail. But I do know it's part of their development permitting process, just like ours. And the Hastings certainly could hire their own person to take a look at it. That would be up to the other property owners as well as far as where they're surveying elevations. Okay. They, they can only hire someone to look at that on their own property. So am I to understand that the back of the Hastings property, the, like on the aerial photograph that we see there, it looks like it's a pretty open area of their backyard that borders Don Jess's property. Is that elevation equal to or less than the proposed expansion currently? I mean, is the ex proposed expansion property higher than their backyard now, or is it about level, or and just the park, the existing park is a little higher? Or? I thought they said it's almost two feet difference. Two feet yeah. to the existing park, or that, two feet to the proposed expansion? That's area. to the existing park. Existing. Right, yeah. That's what I'm wondering, is the proposed expansion area lower or even to or higher than their backyard right now? Because if it's, if it's level, then, I mean, how can we say that it it would run off into their yard? It's, it's flat, but if it's if it's built up higher, like the current park, well, obviously it's gotta be moved, the water has to be moved away from their property somehow or another. But if they already have a contingency plan for the, big, the ditch by the church, you know, even a, even a two inch drop in grade across that width of that property is gonna take all the water off of that proposed expansion right to that ditch. Yeah, and, and in our circumstance, I mean, it, it's, not really, it's not really our charge to, to, to assess that. I mean, the, the, only, the only way you're gonna know that uh, with, any, with any level of certainty at all is for, is for a registered land surveyor to, to create a, a topographic survey and for, and for a registered civil engineer to create a grading and draining plan. But isn't uh, that what our, our stipulations on the uh, special use permit entails is that they have to not impact drainage wise? I mean, in, in layman's terms, it's basically what it means is you can't drain off into the neighboring properties. Sure. And, I mean, isn't that kind of what they're- Sure, but, 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 but that they're still on? that still falls under the county's authority, not-, right. not right not the city of Alvarez's authority in this case, and certainly not on this advisory board's So we don't authority. actually stipulate that in, in the body of the special use permit. That's up to the county. That's up to the county to do that? I, I think we could do it. I just don't know. I, mean, I, I don't think we should. Excuse my ignorance. I mean, I, I think we could, but I don't think that's the route we want to go. Right. I don't right. think no. that's our place. Ours is just to approve or disapprove, and then they'll, they'll handle them. Yeah, because because the county the county has their policies and procedures uh, in, in place, and so we just can offer our recommendations, and then they have to do with it at their right leisure. Okay, that's what I was kind of trying to clarify: is that do we set those stipulations here, or is it well, it's we can't prohibit anything, so yay or nay, and then they do their thing. Any other questions, comments, concerns? Do we have a motion for approval, motion for denial, motion to add some stipulations? I move to recommend approval of case number 19-03-SUP, a request by Natalie and Tim Duggins for a special use permit to allow a campground on the property located at 2953 Southeast Highway 54. For the reasons set forth in the stack, staff recommendations and heard at this public meeting. Thank you. Do we have a second? I'll second. Can we have a roll call vote, Mr. 
Mr. Shivers? Commissioner Fellers? Yes. Commissioner Hackler? Yes. Commissioner Leeson? Yes. Commissioner Long? Yes. Commissioner McLaren? Yes. Commissioner Stewart? Yes. Chairman Tetrick? Yes. Commissioner Watson? Yes. Motion to recommend approval passes 8 to 0. Thank you. Okay, we will move on to item number four, old business. All right, we received an application for a meeting next month. It will be on June 27th. <coughs> it is for a tank farm expansion south of town. So Magellan Pipeline is the applicant, so they'll be here to tell us more about it at that meeting. At your previous meeting, we reviewed the Mears Fertilizer Special Use Permit. Uh, to follow up on that, the City Commission has reviewed it and approved it. And then the last two uh, decisions to make today is that once a year, we elect or re-elect the chairman and vice chairman positions. Um, some, we usually do it this time of year because if we have new members, this is when we have new members or we're reappointing. Uh, Commissioner Fellers is our newest member. So you guys are, are welcome to, to <laughs> informally determine who might want to be interested in chairman, vice chairman, or continuing on. Uh, I believe right now, Chairman Tetrick is our official chairman, and Commissioner Stewart is our vice chairman. Sure. And, and, and I, I, would, I would like to stay on as chairman, if that's what you all decide is appropriate. Maybe we don't want you. <laughs> well, that's perfectly fine. <laughs> I'm trying to be nice. Mr. Chairman, I recommend uh, you to uh, continue in uh, another term as chairman of this advisory board. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. second. All in favor say aye. 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 Wasn't as fast as last time, so that's a plus. <laughs> so do we need to do the vice chairman as well? That is correct. So anytime that you're not here, the vice chairman will run the meeting. I, uh, I move to keep the same vice chairman that we have. I can do that, right? Since it's, I'm not voting for me? Right. Yeah. Good. <laughs> it's informal. Okay. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Congratulations. Easy one, enough. One so since we changed the bylaws earlier this year and they were approved and adopted by the city commission, uh, it's up to you guys to appoint an open seat on the Board of Zoning Appeals. Unfortunately for Commissioners McLaren and Hackler, is an in-city limit seat that is open right now. Um, are you, any of you guys interested in that? I can tell you we meet once or twice a year. This year we have zero meetings so far. <laughs> and uh, none on the radar. <coughs> I'd do that. What? If, you don't meet any, if you don't meet, I'll be bad. <laughs> Put me down. Everyone else, is that okay? Yes. Yeah. Well? All right, easy enough. And that's all I have. Thank you for coming and sticking for a long meeting. Sure. All right, do we have a motion for adjournment? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. aye.